Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are going to be playing as the Von Karsteins. Brand new campaign. Um, well, you know, brand new campaign. Let's play. This campaign is old. It is very old. And despite that, I've never actually played a Vampire Count campaign. I haven't played any, which is super weird. Uh, on the channel, I mean, obviously, you know. Played Vampire Counts. Be mad if I hadn't. But anyway, uh, yeah, Isabella von Karstein. We're going to play as her rather than her husband, even though by turn two we will have access to him. That's how it works. Whichever one you play, the other one becomes available um, after a single turn of the campaign, which is pretty great. But I prefer the bonuses that we get if we start as Isabella von Karstein. So although we're still playing as the same faction, the faction effects differ depending on which one you start with. And so here, this puts more emphasis on her uh, hero capacity for vampires and weapon strength for embedded vampire heroes, which I really like. King Campaign movement range is bloody useful, for sure, but we're going to get slowed down anyway, just because of all the attrition and things, so... You know, just getting around nice and quickly isn't necessarily going to work out, because we can't really do that anyway, just because attrition will kill us, and rebellions, if we if we conquer too quickly. Um, but, speaking of quickly, uh, we are going to be playing by our own rules here. We're not going to do the short campaign victory or the long campaign victory. We're going to be doing the my campaign victory, which is we're going to take over the Empire and call it a day. So, what we might try and do as a, a bit of an extra challenge is I might try and vassalize every elect account because I think it'd be really funny to be the Emperor, you know, when we finally take down Karl Franz and take Altdorf for ourselves, if we had all of the other elect accounts in tow. So that's what I'm gonna attempt to do, but that's a that's a bonus objective. Let's call that a bonus objective. Our main objective is simply to become the Emperor, take over the Empire as uh, Vlad von Karstein and uh, have have our Empress here alongside us. It's going to be great. So, um, also Lord Effects, Undying Love. This is something that both of these characters get, both the von Karstein uh, couple. So we'll get Undying Love plus 15 to melee attack and melee defense when Vlad and Isabella are reinforcing each other. That's insane. Also, this extra melee defense for embedded vampire heroes um, and melee attack for embedded vampire heroes, plus 10 of each. Really powerful, but we're not actually going to have vampire heroes in Isabella's army to begin with, and you'll see why when we get to it. So we're going to be playing hard, hard, and legendary, even though the Chaos Evasion is sort of um, um, a moot point, actually. If it turns up, then fine, it'll be a fun challenge, but yeah, hopefully we'll be done by then anyway. I'm honestly tempted just to turn it off completely, because we spent probably about, I don't know, 10 hours just fighting Chaos in the last campaign, um, it got a bit much, so, you know, I am tempted to turn it off, but I know you guys are going to be annoyed if I do that. So I'm going to leave it on, and I'll just have to hope that I can finish the campaign before this procs, and we have to deal with it, alright? It'll be a, a fun, a fun wrench in the gears, if that happens. So, let's get to it. Hail to you, O oh cold and beautiful Isabella. Manfred dwells in Castle Drakenhof your rightful home. So whilst you should be rightfully proud of what you have achieved so far, there is clearly still much to be done. The Temple of Brood control the lands to the north, as far as the river Stir. They cannot be suffered to endure, lest they threaten your strength. Raise your forces, march on the foe, and show them true terror. The high mountains to the south are infested with dwarfs. Our lands will never be safe with such an enemy so close. Make plans to drive out their stunted kind in time. So set forth, Isabella, wife and warrior, beauty and horror. The fury in your eyes will bring this world to its knees. Good stuff. How uh, how restrained do you think the writer had to be to, to not say beauty and beast? Because <laughs> that's where I would have gone. I would have been like, yep, I'm owning it. Cliché. But I'm sticking with it. Uh, anyway, so, Von Karstein's how they play. Well, you'll see how they play. We're doing a let's play, not a let's not play. Uh, so, Sylvania is in decline. No longer is it feared as the dread land where the dead do not rest, but instead is seen as Sterling's bastard child. Now Ivan Karstein resides in Castle Drakenhof once again. It is time for the vampires to take dominion over their haunted realm. So, these two ladies, 
Ascendant. I think we might be able to do something with them before Stand we uh, before we actually put them now. to good use. Um, well, put them to different use because Isabel is just going to loiter here for a second. So we are going to get the uh, sorry, what was that called? Cursed fields for income and public order. And we are also going to get a channel pit for extra growth. Brilliant. Um, so yes, this should work out rather nicely. Ray's dead. We're not going to bother this just yet. No need. Instead, we are going to get a bunch of bad guys. So we're going to get three of these. They're 250 upkeep per turn. So with all three of them, we're going to have no income. They are going to take two turns to recruit, though. Which is why I'm sending well, these girls off on an errand. Uh, ah, and here we go. Here's our first errand. So, this, uh, I just want to point out, um, it's just a game. <laughs> so, this isn't actually disrespectful, okay? If if this was disrespectful, they wouldn't have made Kevin Lloyd, Kevin Von Lloydstein. So, um, for anyone who doesn't know, Kevin Von Lloydstein here is a, uh, it, it's basically a, um, uh, like a plaque that you see on a public bench. Um, it's a, it's an homage to a staff member who died. So, Kevin Lloyd, Kevin Von Lloydstein here. It's a nice tribute, and I think that's wonderful that they've done that. But obviously, you know, these nice gestures can only happen in the face of tragedy. And that's very sad. And I do feel a little bit bad about trying to assassinate him. And we just assassinated him. Now I feel really bad, but... If, if it was me, I would find it really funny how uncomfortable I was making random dudes on YouTube um, by making them feel bad about killing me. So, I think that would be great. <laughs> That's, you know, if I was a Warhammer fan and was put into a Warhammer game, this is just what you have to expect, you know. So, sorry, Kevin. Sorry, mate. Um, right, let's go with... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go with Wound, I think. Uh, I never, I never go for this sort of uh, agent stuff, which is part of the challenge for me today uh, for this campaign. That's what I wanted to try and do. Um, I wanted to actually try and sort of do more, um, just more of this nonsense, basically. <laughs> kind of, I never do agent stuff. So, uh, it's it's a unique proposition for me. So, Lamian Book of Blood is what we're going to go with, because we are actually being very Lamian right now. Uh, the Lamian line of vampires are the ones that are all uh, tricksy and, you know, engage in spycraft and have infiltrated all the, the, uh, the courts of the Empire. And we will be making use of them. So, said to be the, uh, tr sorry, said to be transcribed from scrolls of Neferata herself, this grave codex instructs recently sired vampires in the art of infiltrating, influencing, and spreading the vampiric curse across the world. This will get us a blood kiss nice and early, which um, we already got one for the assassination, so we're already absolutely blazing. Um, when we get three, we'll be able to buy our first upgrade. Well, awaken our first vampire, I suppose, but... Um, well, we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's crack on. And Vlad von Karstein has woken up. He he just wanted a lay-in. That's it. He just wanted to have a lion, and uh, that's that. So what we are going to do, we're going to stay here for now. We're not going to recruit him yet, because it's just going to cost us money. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to move Isabella over to here next turn. Attack on the turn after. And then once we've taken it, we'll get Vlad von Karstein and give him all of our ground troops and just keep the Air Force. That's the plan. Um, because he has Siege Attacker and Vanguard, and all of the Air Force is incredibly quick. We will also, even though we'll be missing out on the 10 melee attack and defense, I want to put my two agents under Vlad's control. That way they can Vanguard and be, you know, right in the front of the battle and get work done that way. So, um, yeah. That's the way we're going to do it, basically. Alright, 30% chance. Fingers crossed. That's a failure. And now it's going to be, what, 16% for you, isn't it? It's going to be uh, no, no percent chance. Oh, are you still recovering from that? Yes, you're still exhausted, so never mind. Never mind, then. Uh, we'll try again with uh, that one next turn, I suppose. And let's get eyes on this stuff, shall we? Because it would be great if I could kill uh, Zelig von Kruger. If you kill uh, faction leaders in uh, battle, then you also get a blood kiss. So killing faction leaders and you're assassinating people. They both give you uh, blood kisses that we can spend on upgrades. So it would be nice if we kill uh, Zelig 
Van Kruger. Before we kill Manfred. We are going to be declaring war on Manfred, by the way. I will probably um, make him do my bidding. Rather than actually um, kill him. Uh, hang on, did you kill my agent? No, he's over there. Good. Come here, you. Come here, little swine. So, 30%. Not great, but fingers crossed. Critical failure. Great. That's going to set us back. Genuinely, that's going to, that's going to set us back a bit. Uh, at only 15% chance to get them there. Ah, oh, such a shame. And, yep, no more heroes there. Oh, do I try it? 9% chance of being wounded. 15% chance of wounding. I'm going to give it a go. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. We'll see if uh, she can pull out all the stops. She cannot. That's fine. We don't need them. We kind of need them. Uh, but we don't need them. See, this is the sort of gameplay I don't tend to engage in. Which is why I want to do it. You know, I want this campaign to be a little unique. For me, at least. For me. So... We'll see. We'll see how it pans out. Uh, okay, next time. Okay, Dreitch is over here. That's a problem. That is a problem. Can I slow her down? I can hinder her replenishment. That's not good enough. That isn't good enough. <laughs> and I can't run over there, because I can't get past this guy. Oh, I can get past this guy. Oh, okay. In that case, I think I will do that. I don't think... Hmm, I don't know. Dreitcher could probably reach, you know. She could probably reach Fort Oberstar. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, if I if I take this out, Templehof is definitely going to fall to Dreitcher. Almost certainly. Could try and kill this guy, though. 35%? Give it a go. <laughs> nice. Good job, ladies. Good job. Uh, okay, can't level up Wound again, but I can level up Specialist, which will give me plus 1% chance, which isn't a huge amount, but, you know, it helps a bit. does also make it cheaper. So yeah, let's do that now. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, okay, what do I want to do? Ugh. I think if I just run past, I could probably get to Templehof. I could besiege it, but then I'm without Blab. Which is a pain. I might have to declare war on Drychi, you know. This is going to be a pain. This is going to be a real pain. I did a, uh, I did a little test campaign, and Drychi never came anywhere near me. Went straight for, um, straight for our enemies over there. You know those silly humans. You know those, you know those delicious, those delicious juice box folk. So um, yeah, this probably isn't worth fighting, but I do want to fight it because we haven't fought a battle yet. And you've always got to fight the first battle. And they don't give us, like, a juicy target at the start of the campaign in this one. Which is actually very odd, because every campaign starts with you, like, right next to an army that's a nice, like, short thing. Just to be like, hey, come over the battle. But yeah, not here. How weird is that? Alright, so we have a lot of our geists. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, so let's get these guys grouped. And you lot can all just sit together. Cool. Let's get stuck in. Um, I'll tell you what. You two go for them. And... Where are my other bats? Oh, there. Yeah, and you two go for these bats. And I want everybody else... Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's just... Uh, Group these guys for a second. We'll let the bats get the bats. What? Wait, what? Oh my god, there's a fifth unit. <laughs> I was thinking we only had four. We've got five. I was like, why isn't one listening to me? No, we're fine. And so you're not going to do great. You black knights. That's okay. So those bout bats are dealt with. These ones almost are. Okay, you can jump down there now. Let's upgrade them. We need Master of Beguilement on their Lord. And we're going to go attack those zombies. And now it seems that everyone is dying. Good. Okay, my five Burgeists. Can get back into the sky. 
And we'll fly over the top. And see if we can get a nice charge into the back of them. Okay. Get stuck in. Alright, can you get in there? Can you get in there, Izzy? Here she is. Down here. But yeah, these dudes showed up mohawks getting in the way with their bums out. <laughs> it's very punk. It is very punk. It is well and truly the most punk army. More so than the, uh, than the Slayers, you know. More so than Dwarf and Slayers. These guys are really punk. Although Dwarf Slayers, they... They're also fairly scantily clad. I'll give them that much. But these guys, God, they just put their bums in everyone's faces. No shame. Alright. Just give, you, give yourself some dance macabre, yeah? Come on, do some, do some scary dancing. Uh, <laughs> I really, really can't tell what's even happening anymore. But the enemy lord is dead. Thanks to the pop-up, I was able to determine that. Thanks, pop-up. Alright, so that was an absolute doddle. Um, we are going to take it. And uh, we're also going to demolish this tree. That's right, we're going to get rid of the sinister cops. The trees in Sylvania are as evil as its denizens, for they shelter many predators, such as felbats and direwolves. And, um, and now they're dead. Uh, this is such a bother. Really, like, I I really hope they don't go for Castle Drakenhof, but they have no reason not to. I've never seen them declare war on Tempelhof. Never. Which is so odd, because all I did, differently, is I killed, um, maybe this is revenge. Maybe this is the game taking revenge on me for, for being disrespectful. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you'd think just disadvantaging the vampire counts, who start at war with these guys, would mean that these guys would be in a better position and people wouldn't want to mess with them. But no, no, none of that. Didn't didn't work out like that at all. Super weird. Um, let's get the hunger for Isabella. Marvellous. So, Treasurer, while it started off as destitute nobles of Stirland, since becoming undead, the von Karsteins have accumulated great wealth. The Treasurer is in charge of the Master's Vaults. So, 8% income from vampire crypts and... Uh, Vampire keeps. We don't have any of those yet. And a standard of discipline, which is eh, fine, I guess. Those who go to war with a standard of discipline do so under the stern glare of the figure upon the banner and know that they should continue fighting rather than rout. I'm not sure that really applies to the undead. Like, they've already got sort of, you know, sort of magic puppet strings sort of making them do what they do. So it does seem a little bit... Um, I don't know, surplus requirements, I suppose. So, consuming thirst is Vlad von Karstein's unique little thing. So, Siege Attacker, he's also got Undying Love, which uh, helps with, you know, so the plus 15 melee attack and melee defense when him and Isabella are in the same fight. And also, the entirety of, uh, of Vlad von Karstein's army gets a Vanguard deployment, which is just awesome. Mixture of Vanguard deployment and Siege Attacker means he's always the first into battle. It's really great. Absolutely love it. Um, oh god, I love it, but I need to take this bloody tree. Ah. Oh. Right, the Vampire Wars, huh? Well, we are going to do the Vampire Wars again. We did that before and it didn't end so well, but this time, this time, guys, I've got a good feeling about it. <gasps> Tried to run off. Oh, thank god. Okay, quite injured. Maybe it's the attrition that got her. I, I don't know. I have no idea, but she's gone, and that's what matters. So, I'll take it. I will take it. Uh, so, I can only hinder replenishment over there, which is a bit rubbish. Yeah, never mind. Let's come back this way. So, we are going to miss out on some experience here, because I can't um, embed myself yet. Um, so, let's give you our land forces. You're going to go and attack. And uh, then, yeah, just rude. Rude much. Like, wait for your wife, mate. She's coming too. God. Manners. Manners on this guy. See, he is a monster. He's not the man he claims to be. No. Truly a monster. Uh, so yeah, this should be really super easy, but it says we're going to have medium casualties. Although it says we're going to have medium casualties, and yeah, we're not losing anyone, so I'm happy just to just to have it. 
honestly. Uh, so we could subjugate, but I'm not going to. I'm going to occupy. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be Manny that we're going to subjugate. We're going to try and subjugate Manfred von Karstein. We're going to take Drakenhof for ourselves. And uh, he's just going to sit in Waldenhof, probably. This is where we'll subjugate him. Oh, also, we have a Blood Kiss, which is going to be super useful because it's going to give us extra replenishment rate. So here we get to basically um, awaken various, um, you know, powerful and ancient vampires. Um, so here, von Karstein line, handsome, arrogant and charismatic, the von Karsteins are the true masters of men and beasts. So this is one we will be uh, pursuing quite a lot, but I do also have um, some love for the for the blood dragons and uh, the Lamians are going to be very useful if we're going to, um, you know, become an elect account and, and then become emperor, right? We need we need to pull strings in court for uh, all of our all of our um, uh, subjugated elect counts to sort of do what we want them to do, right? So we're going to need the Lamians to help with that. So, Lamian gifts minus 50% upkeep for all heroes is awesome. I love that. But first off, we can do the Von Karsteins because we are the Von Karsteins. It'd be weird not to. So, uh, handsome, arrogant, charismatic. Oh, I've already read that. So 20% extra replenishment for all armies is just an obscene bonus. That is such high casualty replenishment rate. And also, we'll gain access to Sylvanian Crossbowmen, which is very cool. Um, only one unit, though. And then a second unit, and then a third unit. Um, plus handgunners when we get to the third one. But for now, a single unit. Which is fine. It'll give us good replenishment. And good, we were able to embed. And we've got a follower out of it, so that's nice. Warpstone is dark magic incarnate. Undead lords, especially liches, will employ ghoulish hunters to find such precious ore. And, uh, oh, Scabsgrath. That's nice. For Isabella. Uh, the legendary sword of an undead mercenary. It is said that the blade cannot be sheathed without first taking a life and will emit a terrifying <laughs> squeal until it does. <laughs> ah, don't put me away. <laughs> I don't like it. It's dark. I don't want to go in the scabbard. Um, anyway. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> it's just a funny notion to me. Um, so annoyingly, the other guy did all the rays deading, so uh, that's fine though. We'll get one. We'll still get one. Um, so I just realised we actually managed to get the the first thing done, and we haven't even got the first blood kiss from that technology. So I think maybe if you guys are to uh, to play this in your own time, maybe don't prioritise that. You don't need to when you have that many heroes running around. Sure, one died a bit, but she'll be back. She'll be back. Uh, let's do the charnel pit for some extra growth. So this mass grave acts as a locus for necromancers and their ilk, for it contains many fresh bodies ripe for recruitment. You, Creepy. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, and we can get uh, Foster Terror. It's always nice to Foster Terror. Bit of extra growth and vampiric corruption. Lovely. Alright, let's crack on. Okay, so where the hell did... Uh... Oh, we're back. No, we're not. Kevin's back. That means next turn we should get our... Um, our vampire. Who was it? It was the other one. It wasn't Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> it was the other one. I've forgotten a name now. I'll try and remember them. I'm quite bad at names, though. Anyway, Lamian Book of Blood has been done. So now we can do the next technology. And actually, uh, I think I'm going to go straight for the Skeleton Warriors one here to make them free. Minus 100% upkeep. Um, although, I am also very tempted to yeah go for this one for the extra Vargeist bonuses. I do really like those. And minus 10% upkeep for Vargeist is huge as well. So I am tempted to do this whole bunch. Though so those do those do take a while. It's only gonna take 18 turns to get the Defiler of Ancient Barrows, which is kind of insane. So I guess we'll get the Book of Arcan. Also known as the Tome of Bone. <laughs> it's just Oh, so immature, Arcan. This dread volume, uh, authored by Arcan the Black, who's very lonely, is filled uh, with his secrets for installing vigor and other deadly abilities into zombified and skeletal vessels. I don't know what he's doing with skeletal vessels and the Tome of Bone. I really don't. Um, what a weirdo. So, Vlad von Karstein. Magic item drop chance up could be good, because we will have a lot of heroes running around. Um, but it might just be worth getting the hunger so he can stay in combat. So he'll heal in combat if uh, if he has the hunger, which is a very useful ability. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to try and get um, Kevin von Leuch Kevin von Leuchstein with 
our girl, if she comes back here, I think she'll come back at the capital. She might spawn up here, though. I don't know. I never, I never use heroes, so they never get killed. Um, but anyway, oh well, I always use heroes. I just don't use them in armies. Who would do that? Madness. Oh, good, Manny's still up there. <laughs> what an idiot. Uh, uh, so we don't actually, we don't actually need to uh, worry too much here about who attacks first. Although I guess we do, because I want the vanguard, right? So I think I'll still let Isabella be reinforcements. So you go in first, mate. Let's get some zombies, so we have some fodder. Good. And now it's time to punish our wayward son. So let's uh, just also resolve this. There's really no point fighting it. And we're going to occupy. Good. Good, good, good. So now we should hopefully be blocking enough of this area that he can't just run back to Drakenhof. Because um, we would like to defeat him and then run back to Drakenhof. And then run back up. I know it's a bit convoluted, but... You know, keeps him out of the way. Right, let's have a look here. Let's get... Aura of Supremacy, because I want to get all the creatures of the night bonuses. I want uh, charge bonus up for Cryptoris, Vargeist, Vargulf, and Terrorgeist. Mostly for Vargeist and Terrorgeist. Um, so charge bonus of weapon strength for both of them. But yeah, I definitely want that. What's Storm of the Night? Huh. She gets a Vortex ability. I have not used Isabella in a long time. When did she get that? Not a clue, but yay. That'd be fun to use. Um, Vlad von Karstein. You also have Storm in the uh, of the Night. That's fun. Huh. How oh, very cool. I like that. Um, let's go with... I've got Mortal Levies. Which actually makes the Empire like us more, which is very interesting. And it makes our Sylvanian crossbowmen and handgunners better. How exciting. How exciting. I really like Coven of Undeath, though. Gives him extra unit experience for his army and all armies in your... Uh, you know, all units in all armies, which is very cool. So let's have a look. Should we get... Oh, I just don't know. Let's go Aura of Supremacy and I'll start getting Unliving Host. I do want him to have a bunch of Graveguard because I want him to have an army that resembles um, like a, a normal army, right? Like a normal army of the Empire. Like foot soldiers and cavalry and, you know, because that's what he's trying to emulate, basically. So I want that. That's what I want. Okay, now you, Emmanuel Posner, let's get you Specialist. Good, we can just keep going with that. Lovely. Alright, let's move on. Alright, Kevin's getting revenge. Alright. Uh, oh. Oh, I guess we're not getting it back this turn. I guess it was another turn. That's a pity. I really want my hero back. Where? I mean, it did say she was wounded. Not killed, right? So she should come back, I think. Oh, also, I can get the Sylvania crossbowmen now, but I'm not going to get them until I take Castle Drakenhof. I know that seems bizarre, but I want to be an elect account. And you can't be elect account unless you are the, you know, the the ruler of Sylvania. Okay? We've got to be ruler of a province before I do that. Or I'm 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 just not. Okay. I'm not gonna do that. So let's go attack. That's right, I don't want to attack that, because then I won't be able to... Okay, so I have to attack this and sack it? <laughs> Which is very silly. And hang on, you're not at war with them, are you? You might end up being at war with them. Ooh. It's fine. So, we're going to attack uh, Vlad von Karstein, just so he doesn't follow us, I guess. This is the only way we can get rid of him. So yeah, I, I stand by this. I think this is the wisest decision. Um, obviously, I do want to make sure that we are, like... Um, we're getting him under our command, right? It's, it's not about killing him, because, let's be honest, vampires are hard to kill. No, we want to show him who's boss, and he could become subservient to us, as it should be. That's that's the plan here. That's what I'm doing. So, uh, medium casualties, Pyrrhic victory is what the game thinks, but it is a legendary lord, so it would be a shame of us not to fight him. So, we're going to give it a go. Okay, good. So, you lot... Uh, yeah, let's put you separately, and you guys can all just march in very slowly, because you know what zombies are like. Yo, there are a lot of dire wolves. They're going to be very annoying. 
Die wolves are actually very good against things like Vargeist if they can uh, if they can grab you. They can do a lot of work. They can do an awful lot of harm. Do an awful lot of harm. Uh bats can't though. Let's kill all the bats. Good. <laughs> and there's Johan Helschnicks. Yeah, Helsnicked. Hello. Hi there, buddy. You having a jog? <laughs> yeah, I am. Oh, it's a beautiful day. All right, come on, guys. So yeah, we have uh, we have this ability now. We have Scabscrath, which is a little like tear-shaped, um, uh, like breath attack thing. It'd be like a streak of a streak of murdering the enemy. It's not hugely powerful, but it doesn't have to be hugely powerful against you know just hordes of zombies and skeleton spears and things. You know, it's all good. It's all good. Don't you love that? We're marching to battle, and then the wife's army already on the case. Pretty great. Pretty great. So, you coming? You take your time. So, at some point, she will have a hell steed, so she will actually be able to just fly into battle, and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so, Spirit Leech has been cast. Damn you, Manny. He's got Master of the Dark Arts, so he's actually very good at casting. He is very good at that. Okay, let's see if we can't heal him up. Oh, look at that, we can. Oh, okay. Hi. Actually pulled the bats out. Very tricksy. Yeah, this is all going fine. But yeah, the, uh, the Dire Wolves. I was saying, if they can catch you, they can do some good damage to the uh, the Vargeis. Because the Vargeis only have 10 armor, which is shocking. It's really bad. Just real bad. Absolute crap. You know what? You lot, get in a pile. You lot, get out in front. And you, go kill Manny. Brilliant. So, alright, that's not worked. Let's dive at the top of them then. <laughs> and you're still getting there. So, let's get our cavalry up over this way. Yeah, all their doggos are right pain. Look at the damage that we've done to, well, not we've done. That has been done, I suppose is more accurate to say. Uh, the damage that has been done to Manny, just thanks to his, uh, his just shocking overcasting, basically. His hubris. Quick, get him. Get him, boys. So we used uh, Beguiling, sorry, uh, Master of Beguilement on him. I was going to say Beguiling Aura, that's a different ability. But Master of Beguilement lowers his melee attack by 40. So it's only on 30 now. He's usually got very good melee attack. And now he doesn't have very good melee attack. It's pretty great. It's pretty marvellous. Okay, let's get you up and about. So we should have him any second now. And, uh, I don't know, I guess I'll hit them with something. Alright, come on. Come on, you. Okay, scab grass. So here it is. Whee! Good, isn't it? So how'd you do, anyway? How did you do? 40 kills! Actually pretty damn good. Uh, so we suffered quite a lot of damage over here. Because, yeah, it's these dire wolves, you know, they do quite a lot of damage. And with that low armor... It can be quite difficult to get a good, uh, you know, a good hit on them. But what I can do is heal them up. Let's have you heal that one. You heal that one. Yep, managed to stabilise. Good stuff. All right, you guys go for him. And I'm pretty sure Manny got murdered. So that's good news. Yeah, you Black Knights can just stay in combat. There's really no need to leave. You know what? You guys actually pull out. Okay, let's see if we can just get all of our um, bar guys out of combat. There's no need for them to take any more damage, really. And it does look a bit like our enemies have given up. Oh, yeah, totally. I was just going for a lovely walk. <laughs> Some Burke stabbed me with a... with a... glowy turquoise sword. How rude. 
And there we have it. So that went rather well. And we have mad replenishment rate, so we don't really have to care about that. Uh, so I'm only going to sack it. Oh, he's going to run off. That's fine. Yeah, bye. Go for a jog. Uh, so we've got Grave Digger. Ain't saying she a Grave Digger. She ain't messing with no live hose. More shovels, really, than a hoe. You know, digging up them graves. Uh, so anyway, pass me my spade. I'm looking for Gallows Bait. Sounds lovely. Sounds lovely. So, uh, Vlad von Karstein. Booby. Let's get you magic item drop chance, because there's a lot of magic items. Always. I actually stole the grave digger from Manny. So that's quite funny. I am unstoppable. Now let's get Emmanuel... Uh, Posner leveled up. Let's get Wound leveled up again. Now, ah, there he is. I think I might run over this way and see if I can't get him. 47% uh, chance, which is pretty good. So we're gonna we're gonna try and run over there and get him, even if it means missing out on this battle. I am fine with that. Even though I, I actually I could do with having another hero in here because all these grave garden things can be quite a challenge. But uh, I think we'll make do. I think we'll make do. Oh, he ran off. He ran around. Cheeky. Going around the mountain when she comes. Oh, hi. Yes, hi, I Melissa died. Ratep. What are your odds? 29%. Compared with... 46%. Wow. We really do have one character that's a lot better. So your vampire, Melissa Ratep, has returned from her absence, is once again ready for duty. Um, but doesn't have the best odds here. I might... 18% mm, chance to get wounded. I can just see that happening immediately. So, chapter objective, the spread of undeath. The von Karstein's influence must spread across all of Sylvania and beyond into the Empire itself if they are to realise their Imperial ambitions. I am very ambitious Imperially. Um, in, in this campaign, at least. Uh, but before they can rule, a power base should be established and fresh troops risen for the challenges ahead. All right. Whatever you say, boss. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and try and wound him with the other character. And over here, we're actually going to put um, Melissa into uh, Vlad's army. So that's all good. And now I need to have you join the army. You can also... Yeah, let's get some more spearmen. Why not? You can just about afford it. Oh, whoops. The, the uh, agent met the army and so it put me in selecting Glad. So I clicked to move Isabella in it. Yeah, weird. Anyway, Port Oberstar. Let's level that up too. Okay, that, I think, should do it. Lovely. Also, there's a bunch of Skaven over here, and they are crazy when it comes to just hiring, like, just just spamming uh, agents. So we'll have plenty of things to assassinate while we're sat around waiting for, um, you know, development costs. So, um, when I say development costs, just, you know, the, the cost of developing our, uh, our nation, whether it be financial or whatever. Um, because every little inch forwards we're gonna have to restructure everything and wait for corruption to spread and all the rest of it there'll be a lot of stopping and starting in this campaign we're not gonna be able to blitz um particularly easily maybe we can when we get a load of free um skeletons to babysit regions but you know still i reckon our agents will have a lot to do so let's fight it it's going to be high casualties but only high casualties um of those zombies and skeletons so basically low casualties um because nothing we're going to be losing matters in the slightest. But we're going to fight it anyway and lose nobody, probably. And if we do, it also doesn't matter. Okay. So, uh, you lot are just going to charge in. I know. What a, <laughs> what an exciting plan. In your charge. And you lot attack the walls. And Isabella, you um, climb up over here. It's going to take you a long time, but I have faith in you. Okay, one more. Come on. There he is. 
Okay, good. So, uh, Henrik von uh, Deal is here. Just Graveguard. There's a lot of Graveguard all at this gate. Should be pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think they have any vampires. So, they have no invocation of the heck or anything, so... Good. Good stuff. And this would be nice to use as well. Not sure we'll get the chance, though. So there are, of course, some dire wolves. You know, there's uh, all the air force back here. But these guys might just die to army losses, and if they don't, I, I think we're fine. I don't think our enemies are going to last too long. At least I hope not. It'd be a shame if they did. Um... Alright, you lot are going to attack there, and you lot are going to attack there. So we can use our bats to pin these guys in place, so they can't flank us while we are absolutely slaughtering this army of Crypt Ghouls. With those Crypt Ghouls dead, it means that these Crypt Ghouls and these zombies can get onto the walls and help us out. So that is the plan. That is the plan. Also, you're just fine there. There's no problem there. Alright, Master of Beguilement on those Crypt Ghouls, please. So that way they can't fight back against Melissa. Yeah, there we go. Good times. So, do you want to just attack there? You'll probably just climb up the ladder, right? Yeah, good. Perfect. Um, not terrible. It's better against lightly armored units, but there really aren't any. There aren't any lightly armored units around. Well, I guess dire wolves, but they're not exactly um, close together either. So, you know, lightly armoured units that are closely packed is what you want. You need a nice combo of the two. Alright, that'll do. And Isabella's almost up here. Lovely. So, how are you lot doing? Doing good? Did you get another unit? I can't, I can't see. Oh, there they are. There they are. They do exist. <laughs> they do still exist. I know it's hard to tell sometimes. Okay. Good. And gatehouse. Not very destroyed. But getting there. Alright, now let's actually heal Melissa. We can't. She's on the walls. You can't heal people on the walls. Which is very odd. It's a very weird decision. I don't know why they decided to enact that. Um, I, I don't really understand why. Can you guys think why? Because, like, it's already... You're already at a disadvantage by trying to hold the walls in a siege. I always do it because I think it's, you know, it's just better. It's just the spirit of the game, right? You hold the walls. Um, obviously, the towers are good, but once the enemy climb the walls, you're better at just run off and choke point everything into little streets. That's way easier to defend than trying to defend the walls. So why do they disincentivize you from staying on the walls as the vampire count? I don't really understand that. Or does it stop you... I mean... I'm thinking of defense, but I guess on the attack, it's disadvantaged us attacking, and that's a good thing. But, I don't know. Seems a bit weird to me. Okay. Oh, there's more graveyard. You guys don't quit, do you? No, you don't. Yeah, go get them. Oh, it's just zombies chasing them over there. Yeah, that's probably not going to do so well, is it? Uh, well, their lord's nearly dead. Now, go get those graveyard. Okay. Go get them. I want these guys dead. So I can have these walls. Okay, they're my walls. I want them. Also, we do have some skeleton warriors in here. The graveyard are all just sort of smushed under mohawks and butts. So it's really hard to know uh, their current situation. Okay, almost dead. Good. Still haven't broken in through here somehow. I'm not sure where these skeleton spearmen are going. Did I knock all of them off the walls and now they're having to move around? Because that could be the case. I wouldn't put it past uh, wouldn't put it past me to have done that. Okay, good. Um, all right, more grave guards. Oh no, can't attack from that angle apparently. Just attack from here, whatever. Can I, can I not reach from there? Ah, okay. Never mind then. Let's just attack that and forget about it. Uh, also, let's stop you guys from being able to hit me very hard. And now I'm going to go attack him. 
<laughs> Look at these guys restructuring. They're going to attack from here, I just know it. We're going to go straight over the buildings, mate. You don't really need to angle yourself like that. So our bats are, are crumbling. Oh, no way. We can get more. It's okay. We don't really have to worry about it. And you guys aren't down there very well, are you? No, you're not. You're a little bit... Our plans are a bit up in the air, you could say. Alright, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. Let's just come over here and attack these guys in the rear instead, where we've got some more room. If anyone wants to listen. Come on, guys. Come on. Okay, now go get them. That'll do. And Bats blotting out the sun. I think we're winning. Right, so what else we got? Yes. And where's Vlad? Oh, he's in here. Cool. Okay, you don't go that way. Um, Izzy, let's try and heal some of them. Yeah, so this grave guard is going to be dead soon. Rather than guarding the grave, we'll put them in one. <laughs> nice one. Dead jokes. Uh, come on, guys. Come on now. Come on. Leave those grave guard alone, okay? They know not what they do. Okay, good. Let's go get them, boys. That's if you're ready. You ready? Yeah? Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna listen? Or are you a bit stuck on someone? I think we're okay. I think we're okay. So let's lock the group, and let's go. Good. So, let's beguile one, and beguile the other, and now none of these guys are going to have any melee attacks, so uh, it should be pretty easy. I say not any, they'll just have very little, I believe. Eight, yeah. So, not bad. Not bad. When they start falling from the sky, that's when we, oh yeah, okay, there we go. That's when you know it's theirs. That's how you can tell it apart. There's a superior in only one respect. They're better at dying. Awesome. And we did lose a unit of bats. We technically lost two, but one decided to come back from the dead, so that's fine. Um, but no, those bats are gone forever, and they will be missed. They will be missed. Okay, so, we're obviously going to take it. It's Castle Drakenhof. <laughs> Tier 1 Castle Drakenhof. It's a bit rubbish, but hey, it's it's home. So, you there, Izzy. Let's get you some toys. Let's get you Creatures of the Night. Exchanging glances. Let's get her hubby some new toys too. Shall we get him the Unliving Host? Maybe. We don't really have any decent infantry yet. Um, I mean, crap infantry would do the job, right? If we can buff it. So I guess there's no reason not to get this. It means that when we do get Graveguard, he'll have the skills for it. So I guess that's good. Or I could start focusing on spells for him. That wouldn't be terrible, would it? No, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, Wind of Death is a classic. So yeah, let's let's start moving up towards Wind of Death with Vlad, because he is just running up with a bunch of chaff, and it's really just him on his own, killing stuff. So, you know, I'm cool with that. Uh, now, for you... Wow, this is the first level up, huh? You died on your first mission, did you? Or you missed one, and then you died on your second. That's also a possibility. So, I guess I'll put up Wound. Guess I'll put that up. God, I never do that. It's, it feels so strange, doing those skills. I just never do them. Uh, Schwarzhoff, and I get a haunted mill. I've always wanted a haunted mill. At night, the mill by the blood-clotted streams begins to turn, mixing grains with grinded bone. Ah, oh, lovely, a lovely bone meal. That's that's a meal you make out of <laughs> out of those ingredients. Oh, hey, look, they had another army. What what the hell was that guy doing before then? 
That's very strange. But, okay. Um, Odilo Backman is not going to be able to defend that, so I guess that's that then. Yeah, fine. Yep, yeah, sure showed me. What, what strange people. Alright, so, uh, assault garrison failure. Yeah, fine. Uh, oh, he's still there. Okay. So, 45%. <laughs> Did it again. Did it again. Again, still doesn't feel great doing that. Um, final level of specialist. And, I don't know, do we, do we run off into the night? Do we start killing rats? Yes, do we start killing rats? Right. Well, she seems keen. She seems keen to go kill rats, so, um... So be it. The world will drown in blood. That's a bit in dramatic, Vlad. It's a bit dramatic. <laughs> the world will drown in blood. Yep. Cool. Uh, ambush. Are you in range of the town? It would be really quite rotten if these two attacked. And, um... Just messed me right up. Can you imagine? So we do have another blood kiss now, which actually means I can get any of these other bonuses. Let's have a look at the other ones here. So 10% extra damage uh, weapon strength for cavalry units. This gives us extra research raid, which is bloody useful. Um, Strigoi, ambush success chance up by 20%, or we get the upkeep reduction for heroes. So the ability that I want the most is actually the research raid. And now that we have taken back, um, you know, a uh, sort of an ancient and powerful um, landmark for uh, for the vampires. I can I can imagine a couple of necrocs hidden away in there, you know, Manny using them when he needs them, when he needs some of that ancient uh, those ancient magics. Manny was big on collecting ancient magics, you know, he was big on that. He was rather cunning like that, big on uh, collecting information. So I could see him doing this. So, screw it. I'm doing it. Even though I did say we'd want the Lamians on side, I want the bonus. Brilliant. Now, I'm going to be there in 14 turns. Hell yeah. So, uh, yep, we'll just wait a turn with them then. Although I suppose I could get some more trash. It really is just trash available, huh? Oh, you guys. Although, actually, I say that, I can get some crossbowmen. Excellent. They'll be right at home alongside all the zombies. Those poor little sods. I must say, it's not a good, not a good place to be, is it? I can only get the one. I have no money. Never mind. Damaged building. Oh right, yeah, they can stay damaged, I guess, because I can't afford to do otherwise. On thy knees, then and only then shall I hear thine words. Peace treaty. No. So what's this then? An enemy within, which is a uh, a um, a Warhammer Fantasy roleplay campaign that came out in I think first edition that was redone in second and is now being redone again for fourth edition. Um, beautiful books. I have a few of them. It's um, just stunning, and the companions that come alongside them. I'm not here to advertise uh, Warhammer Fantasy roleplay books, but the companions to the Enemy Within campaign for each of those chapters. Uh, it, they are astounding. They have so many little details. Uh, like, one is just full of resources about the different, uh, uh, like, herbs and regents and things around the Empire. And there's, like, another one that's just full of the different transportation types, you know, the different sorts of coaches and stuff. Which is all essential when you're making an RPG, you know. But uh, it's, it's real estate that most other supplements just haven't really, you know, sort of given up. To, uh, to that kind of content. So it's, it's just beautiful. Really, really nice stuff. Absolutely gorgeous books. But anyway, uh, one of your spies who fits, uh, who flits between the courts of mortal men seems to be straying from his appointed task. He is a being that still breathes but craves the red kiss. Perhaps a visit is in order to remind him who he, see, who he serves. Is he... Is this a booty call? I think it must be. Give him a whiff of immortality. Um, the carrot is favoured over the stick. A visit in the dead of night under the guise of a bat swarm and a drop of unholy blood should remind him of his agenda. Or we can snap his neck. 
Or we could snap his neck, which makes our hero action chance better. Um, I prefer better success rather than cheaper. Well, it's only for two turns. I'm not sure we'll even have an action to do in those two turns, but screw it. He's dead. And, um... Alright, you're going to have to be quick. You have to find... You have to find a Skaven and kill him. Alright. Can't tell if there's a hero over there. So yeah, I guess head over there, search those ruins. I know there's Skaven in there. So we'll discover them and hopefully find an agent in there that we can, uh, we can kill. Channel Pit. Lovely. And for you, Melissa Ratep. Not going to get wound. You know what? We're actually going to focus on this nonsense. We're going to do a safeguard. I'm going to make her better at killing. Because uh, she sort of missed her chance a bit. We will have her do some agent stuff later. But right now, I, I just think Emmanuel Posner just really has some levels on her. Is really um, doing the job a lot better than, uh, than this one can. Which is a shame, but, you know, we can get her a level up now. So, you get in there. All excited-like. And then we wait for your wife. Good. And uh, we should probably repair this stuff, huh? Can't afford it yet, huh? Damn. Also, what the hell? How does Johan Helsnick have this huge army? I mean, there is zombies, but still. Where is he getting these? How very strange. Uh, they want a peace treaty. No peace treaty and a confederation. No, they don't, which means... And actually, vassalization, not on the cards either. So they only have the one settlement. So if I take this, I'm going to vassalize him. He's going to have this big army doing my bidding immediately, which is really rather nice. What I might be able to do is actually just declare war on these guys and let Manny handle it. The one problem with um, vassalization and just vassalizing a bunch of stuff is you can't tell your allies to, to like stand down or to sit out any wars. They are always brought into war when you're at war with someone. Which means that if I do make a bunch of the elect accounts my vassals, they are then going to kill all the other elect accounts unless I am there to handle it. So sending off my vassals to just sort of get things done might not actually work. So we're going to have to be careful if we want to do our sort of, you know, our, our self-proposed bonus objective. So, you know, if the odd elect account happens to die, though, it'll be awkward, but I guess I could just... I could just install a vampire lord that suspiciously has the exact same name as the elect count from the previous regime, you know? I could just put one of them there. <laughs> anyway, we're going to auto-resolve this because I don't see the point in fighting it, and we are going to subjugate Manfred von Karstein. And because we vassalized, we got a blood kiss. So we get a blood kiss for vassalizations as well. So it's uh, vassalizations, assassinations, Leaders killed in battle, and other, I think, might apply to events. So, like, you know, we did a technology that gave us one, that sort of thing. So, you know. Okay, now do I tell him to attack or not? It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I kind of want him to. I kind of want Manny to do that. I'll wait for now. I'll wait for now. Or do I? I don't want him to sit... And do nothing but raise an army. Because then he'll turn it to me, won't he? That little son of a gun. Um, oh well. Let's get Curse of Undeath. Standard of Discipline. Those who go to war with the Standard of Discipline do so under the stern glare of the figure upon the banner. And know they should continue fighting rather than rout. Which is a weird thing with an army of the undead. Because they're all, they've all basically got necromantic um, puppet strings. You know? Um, forcing them forwards. It's why when their leadership breaks, they crumble. It's not really about uh, keeping your spirits up. Huh, <laughs> keeping your spirits up. It's exactly about keeping your spirits up. How about that? I did a, I did a funny. Um, anyway, Forbidden Rod. Very, very swift change subject there. This marble and golden laced artifact can summon the winds of magic, but at a cost to the user. Which is very cool. I really like that ability. Especially in a faction that can then use magic to heal. It means you get this interesting trade, um, which is cool. So you can take damage in one place, 
to then give health to somewhere else with the magic, or do more damage somewhere else if you're uh, if you're so inclined. So I do need to work out where I'm going next, and normally I would run off into the moot and things, but actually, I think actually I, I'll go to Bukathan. I think I'm going to go north with these guys. I think that's what I'm going to do. That sounds like a lot of fun. Let's do it. So, Vlad, my boy, let's go get another elect account under your emperorship. Oh, this is fun. I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, let's repair everything. Never mind. That I can actually just destroy, I just realized. I don't even need that. Uh, we already have a sinister cops. It's plenty sinister as it is. We're, we're fine. Uh, also, is that... That's public order, not growth. As much as I like the money, I need the growth in Castle Drakenhof. Oh, which is why I can actually go ahead and foster some terror. Everyone loves fostering terror. But I do like that. With the vassalizations, we will still be able to enact those um, uh, commandments, which is really handy. And I do wonder if we can issue a commandment, because they have a vassal. Can our vassal do a commandment as well? I wonder. Can they do a commandment to, say, put up vampiric corruption or something? Can I actually get more purging of, of untainted if I take over some of the territory and give the other one to an, you know to a vassal? <laughs> I wonder. Although, actually saying that, of course not, because the vassal that I would be taking would be mortal, and so they could then do one that puts up untainted while I was putting up vampiric corruption. It could get real messy. So I'm just going to assume that they don't do that. But, oh well. Thou shalt treat me with the respect I deserve, or die. Are you going to try and fight me? Non-aggression pact, and they're willing to pay me for it. That's rather interesting. Um, and they are at war with Helmut Fjallback right now. Uh, and what is this guy doing over here? Johann Helschnicht isn't at war with anyone. Why is he running off? That makes no sense. Alright, fine. You do you, mate. Um, I'm gonna say... Yes, for now. We've already stabbed uh, Manny in the back, so... <laughs> We're not exactly on the best terms with people anyway. We can always stab Dreiter in the back. That's, you know, whatever. That's fine. So yeah, Dreiter just got punked. So that's good. So, Ray's newly dead. Uh, also, you know, befriending a, a tree is a bit of a weird one. I don't think the, the tree would like as much, but... I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. So, uh, Ray's newly dead. A single word, boon, spoken during the ritual, will harden the skin of corpses as they jerk back to life. Um, it's boo. It's, it says they're, as they're, you know, jerking back to life, you go, boo. And it, it they tense up, and that, that gives them better melee defense. <laughs> it's, it's not true. Uh, anyway, so that's fine. You know, slightly, slightly better zombies and skeleton warriors. It'll do. The saucy bard, a ribald rhymer of raucous repute, has arrived in your lands. As you tour the settlements, his vulgar verse spreads like the galloping scum pox, sowing boundless cheer to the locals. Public order has now risen in response. Well, it's nice, you know. The peasantry are being haunted, and we are sucking the brains out of their noses and, and everything else, but, um, you know. At least there's a bard. <laughs> So, uh, let's see if we can't get over here, huh? So, searching the ruins actually counts as an action, which is sort of annoying. It means if there is a Skaven there, we can't do anything about it. Praise Sigma! Praise Sigma! Um, yeah, so never mind. Screw it. Let's head back north. Let's head back north. Via the moot. There's just no point. Because we are trying to make it, you know, make a deadline here. We only have a turn before um, doing that. There's only reason to get there. But now, I want to support the rest of our team. Because we're going to be heading north. So, let's get the charnel pit there. Charnel pit. Who actually? Wine would be nice. But no, charnel pit there. Charnel pit's everywhere, guys. I am glad. Alright, so, Melissa. The evil Melissa. Let's get you... 
Uh, I'm going with impassioned, because we don't have the hunger. We don't have the hunger until 8, so we need some survivability, and 35 melee defense makes me incredibly nervous. I know 95 armor's pretty good, but I'd rather shrug off the damage entirely. Also, I'd kind of like to murder him. We can't afford it, that's a pity. Ah, oh, I really want to... I really want to kill that dwarf. Ah, oh, we'll have to do it later. We'll do it later, guys. We'll kill the dwarf later. <laughs> Good. Alright, so, Vlad von Karstein, we're going to declare war on these little sods. Uh, obviously, we can't choose whether Sylvania comes or not, but Ostland is going to be coming. So, we may have bitten off a fair amount here. So, we'll have to wait and see how this goes. So, leadership for somebody. Oh, I don't know. For Melissa. If she gets surrounded, you know, heaven forbid, we don't want her crumbling. Because she's not going to be immortal for quite some time, so we've got to look after her. So, um, this is a lot, obviously. But, we're going to do something that I hate. And I can tell you why I hate it, as I'm doing it. Um, I wouldn't have attacked. Actually, I probably would have attacked with the two armies, I'm fine doing it. But, this strategy, I don't think should be in the game. So, I attack the second army, and he runs away, because that battle, if he'd stuck with it, would have been uh, Federin versus Isabella and Vlad. Wolfram wouldn't have joined in. Vlad, despite penning in Wolfram, would still be able to take part in the other battle. And I hate that. It favours the attackers so much. And you can do that strategy with anything. If I just had literally Isabella and no one else, it could have just been some generic vampire lord following Vlad around. Just setting up that combination. Every time I saw, you know, a, a, a garrisoned... Um, settlement with another army next to it. I could just have the you know the one guy or the big army doesn't matter which. You know it could be li a literally one dude going ha ha you can't come out of the walls now giant army because you got to get past me while I just butcher everything in the surrounding lands. It just it doesn't work. It, there's so many situations where it is just stupid, but it is always exploitative. It always favors the attacker and that just makes the game snowball too much. It's much better to prioritise the defenders, and then you don't have to implement crap like, you know, diffusion of magic and things to try and stop things from escalating too much. Just stop favouring the attackers, and we're golden, you know? So anyway, come here, Federin. Um, <laughs> and yes, we're cheesing it, like, whatever. Uh, let's give extra leadership to um, uh, you, Izzy. Okay, you can carry a banner, it'll encourage you. Good. She doesn't need encouraging. <laughs> anyway, Federin Claws. Let's get him. Uh, so I could auto resolve, obviously, but I'm going to fight it because I like these little battles. I find them fun. All right. So we have our bats. They're going to go in first and uh, just work as a pin cushion, basically. Uh, or maybe Isabella will. <laughs> maybe Isabella will do it. One or the other. Uh, boop. Boop. And boop. It's the boop maneuver. You all know it. I'm sure, we're all well versed in the boop maneuver. So, yep, this is going well. And of course, we do have uh, Scabscrath, which will be a very nice attack across our enemies here. I think I might go for the Spearman, just because they've got the anti large, you know? Uh, so, of course, the Pistol is going to be a nuisance, but generally, I just want to try and push the. Um, Push the ranged units back. Ooh, do I go for them? Hmm. Alright, that'll do. And now you can go for the free company. Good. Don't know what these guys are doing. Not a lot. <laughs> you keep chasing. Sweet. Uh, are you supposed to be attacking someone? I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be attacking someone, mate. Alright, they're getting wrecked. So, Scout's Grath didn't go to plan. But... Can't really be that annoyed. Oh, hello. Looks like we caught those pistol ears somehow. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Alright, now you guys get the heck out of there. Uh, ah, good. Alright, go get them, wait, don't ya? And I guess I will... Oh, I'll wait for them to come in. I'll scamp scrap them all. Marvellous. Yep, yeah, you guys. 
Come on, and you. Ah, oh, screw it. Let's go get him. Okay, we should be able to get rid of that cavalry fairly quickly. And now let's scab scrath them both. Is that a little too far? It's hard to tell. This thing has like mad. It goes like a mad distance. See, look at that. So far. Oh, okay. I was going to charge that guy in the rear, but he's dead already. That's embarrassing. Oh, well. Okay. Come on. Stop in the air. And go. <laughs> She's having a whale of a time. Alright, you know what? Give yourself some buffs. Good. Okay, those bats should be able to handle all of this. Good. This is going very well. It's going very well indeed. Alright, who can we heal? Let's heal you. You're missing a boy. Can't have that. Can't have you missing a boy. And... I think that's probably going to be it, isn't it? Master of Garment, so veteran claws can't fight back. And... Okay, yeah, there's, there's some spearmen. You know, good for them. They're coming back. Trying to help the... Uh, help out the Lexa. I mean, I wouldn't want to annoy a Lecter, you know. Lecters are, um... Well, you know, they're, they're piles of Sigma. And you know what he's like. So, let's, uh... Yeah, let's call that a day then. Decisive victory. Lovely. Alright. Tremendous. So, let's dominate the captives. I do like that replenishment. Good. Uh, so, Gambler's Armour. Renald, the god of thieves, tricksters, and gamblers, has blessed the armour in those who are willing to take a chance. 8% ward save is really nice. And I think I'm actually going to give that to Melissa. Because, uh, oh, hang on. Gambler's Armour is on Isabella. It, what? It didn't say that it attached to anyone. Usually it says it's equipped when it equips. But this time it didn't. It's just... It just didn't bother to tell me. Okay, fine. I guess you can stay there. I guess I don't mind. Uh, okay, so now... Okay, so if I attack, um, Isabella will join in in this fight. Which is rather handy. Uh, so we've got Dark Knight for Isabella. She can be the Dark Knight. Um, also, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get Restless Dead. Let's get Creatures of the Night. And let's attack with Vlad. So high casualties, Pyrrhic victory. I mean, that's obviously not true, but fine. So what is nice, this is Wolfram Hurtwig, so it'll be another blood kiss, because he is a uh, faction leader. He's the elect count of Ostermark, so it'd be very good to get him killed nice and early. Uh, annoyingly, there is so many, like, that's a lot of troops from Tal of Eklund. And I'm not very popular with the Empire. So I would not be surprised if we had to fight a stack and a half next turn. Which has me a little bit concerned. More than a little bit, in fact. It has me very concerned that I have to fight this next turn. But, I don't know. Maybe we'll be alright. Okay. So our reinforcements are coming in from over there. That'll be nice. Uh, we have crossbowmen, which is awesome. So cool to have crossbowmen. I really like that. That was such a nice touch. It's really thematic. But, uh... Yeah, it's just great. It's a really good touch. Okay. Everybody in then? Okay, well not everyone. Still got zombies, but like... Zombies, you know. Okay. You go attack over there. And you guys will fly in. Lovely. God, I love being able to shoot Pistoliers. Because Pistoliers are so good against the undead. They're an absolute nightmare. Okay. You go that way. And where are my bats? Bats. Bats. And more bats. 
good. And now you lot. Use position behind. Those mortars are going to get rounded up nice and quickly. And yeah, you guys should uh, kill Wolfram. That'd be a neat trick. Good. Good stuff. And now let's uh, spirit leech him as well. Alright, good. Yep, that's doing it. That's doing it alright. Okay. Okay, these guys broke very quickly, which means I get to turn around and commence more murder. Good. And, oh, they're about to break too. Excellent. Uh, so bats, you chase the pistoliers down indefinitely, that's what you're best at. Just chasing stuff that could kill you if it turned round, but won't because it's a ranged unit and that's not how the AI work. It's like my favourite. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Alright, let's kill you then. Let's, let's go ahead and kill you. Come here, you. Oh, good boy. Good boys. Aw, you're doing good. Oh no, don't let him hit you. Oh no. Poor little guy. But here we go. Here we go. Get some healing. Okay, don't let don't let naughty naughty hurt twig scare you. Aw. Okay, you guys need to intercept. Oh not. I mean, it's gonna be army losses, so yeah, we're good. Cool. Well, that went well. We're gonna heal. Can I heal you? Oh, I can heal you. Wow. The range. Hell yeah. Uh, also, can you heal someone? Not yet. Well, tough. Tough, because you're going to. No, you're not. You have no magic. Any second now. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Are we gonna get any back? Twelve. 12 of them. There's still 12 of them. Okay, well that was pointless. Alright. Job well done. So there goes Wolfram. Uh, we're going to take it over, even though this is probably a terrible idea. Uh, we've got the Trickster's Helm, so more ward saves. Lovely. Big fan of that. A dingy battered helmet that looks like any other. But this is the Trickster's Helm, a powerful artifact that protects the wearer. Um, it'll... Ogres, my lord. Oh. These brutish nomads are as strong as they are stupid. But do not underestimate them. They are hardy warriors and will cannibalize any foe that dares to cross them. I would absolutely get them. That'd be so good, because I really want some more heavy, like, shock cavalry. Um, I would absolutely love to get those. I wish I'd get them this turn, but I can't. But yeah, this guy's definitely going to declare war on me, isn't he? Servant of the faith. I just tell. And uh, Johan's just chilling. What are you doing, mate? Like, seriously. Ugh. I declare war now, but... Um, yeah, he's not going to be able to attack before this guy would be in a position to declare war on me, so I'd rather wait for this guy to make the first move, because uh, my allies aren't going to make any difference um, in, in this situation. But uh, what I am going to do is this. Because now, if they take, if they attack Essen, they'll take it immediately, and that doesn't matter. But these two can defend each other. Um, if one of them gets attacked, the other one can turn up as reinforcements. We're a little injured, but whatever. Um, do you want more zombies? I mean, you don't want more zombies. Zombies are rubbish, but it's fine. You can get them. Cool. It's a bit pathetic. Anyway, so Ogre Mercenaries. Ogre mercenaries, with a great crump crump crump, a large group of ogres has appeared nearby. Though generally expected to attack and plunder any settlement they come across, it seems they do not seek a fight, at least not immediately, but are looking for the most lucrative cool to battle they can find. Wholly untroubled by morality or questions of good and evil, ogre mercenaries could be a great boost to your battle ranks should you choose to hire them. So yeah, Essen, um... It's not stationed, there's no garrison there. Oh, actually, there is a tiny garrison. I will get drawn into combat, but Isabella should be drawn into that too, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, we'll get brought into combat. 
don't have to worry about it too much. We'll have everybody. However, with these two armies, they could do what I just did to them, because it favours the attacker for some weird reason. So, um, just by standing outside like that, you can circumvent it. The AI don't do that, so it feels incredibly cheap to me. Um, that's not really the spirit of what they're trying to represent uh, with this game. You know what I mean? So, Fort Oberstire. Let's do something here, shall we? A gibbet. Everyone loves a good old gibbet. Mmm, gibbets. Alright, let's crack on. Okay, this makes absolutely no sense. Why is Musion declaring war on Sylvania? How do, how have they even met? Like, what the hell is going on here? That is... That's just strange. I don't understand that at all. That is so weird. I mean, currently Sylvania hates us as well, which is quite funny. Uh, we're going to declare war on the side of it, because I don't want to break our, um, you know, our thing. Okay, so what's this then? The omens are ill. Something you have done has angered the gods, yet they are fickle. They may forgive you in time, or more immediate appeasement might be necessary. Uh, public order sounds nice and everything, but I think we need the growth, even though Essen is going to be very upset with us. Let them stew. They should be patient if your realm will endure and grow, and they will reap the benefit. Good. So, uh, Manny is having fun. He seems to be running headlong towards Bukafen, which isn't what I want him to do. <laughs> I think... I think I'm about to declare war on these guys. I think that might be what's about to happen. Well, that's embarrassing. Um, not yet. But, mm, I really don't know. I really have no idea. More zombies, please. <laughs> we don't need more zombies. Uh, in fact, we have too many zombies now. I was hoping to get some uh, ogres in the army. Probably better, wouldn't it? Well, here we are. So, cautiously entering the ogre mercenaries' camp, you realise it is not just a single ogre tribe that has arrived, but three separate tyrants marching their armies as one. Furthermore, it appears that each tribe has its own combat preference, the likely reason they have grouped together. A reasonable bribe should be enough to convince one of the three tyrants to lend you some of his tribe's considerable fat-laden muscle. Uh, I'm obviously going to go with the, the Horned Guts tribe. Just the Mordfang cavalry, and just like the obvious like best pick here. I know you're getting two units into three, but we don't need three when we have two Mornfen cavalry. So, um, to me, that's just the obvious choice. Uh, in like 99% of the time, especially in the early game, uh, where basically we don't have this role filled. We don't have like heavy armor piercing cavalry. In fact, we can never get that. <laughs> so we're going to get it. So, uh, the right of Ogrehood to break Mornfangs is vehemently observed by the Horned Gut tribe, masters of the heaviest shot cavalry in the world. And now they're mine. Mwahaha. Mwahaha. I shall go. Etc. Um, they're 1,200 each, huh? That's pretty pricey. That isn't cheap. Uh, so yeah, do I want to declare war on him? I do. I really do. I really do want to declare war on them. Alright. Keep coming this way, Emmanuel. Uh, there's Gustav. So yeah, I think what I might do, even though it might be a bit ridiculous. Honestly, yeah, this army we could defeat fine with these two armies. That's not really a problem. Uh, what I might even do is set up an ambush so they don't know that these troops are here. And they might actually be uh, inclined to attack me, and then Manfred can take more time, and then I can start heading north and doing this stuff properly while Manfred is busy fighting this nonsense. And hopefully, hopefully that will sort things out. So let's give it a go. I know we're declaring war on everybody, but uh, well, it's the vampire wars, guys. So what do you expect? So now with that bombshell, I'm declaring war on everybody. This is where I'm going to end the episode. I know. I know. But it's been a fun one. And yeah, playing lots of politics. We have, uh, you know, putting many strings. And hopefully once we get this guy, we'll actually have our ninth blood kiss. And uh, we can put the upkeep down for our two heroes. That'd be quite fun. Also, the vigor loss reduction is very cool as well. Hmm. Ambush success chance would be quite good too. Oh, and vampiric corruption as well. 
And public order penalty due to lack of presence of corruption is amazing too. That's also really cool. I really like this as a as a thematic thing, actually, the public order thing. Because the Strigoi, they tend to just live in, like, the sewers of cities and things. Just, like, just eating whatever they can. Just, like, you know, sucking the blood out of rats and things. So, um, you know, they don't tend to live in, in areas that are corrupted. Um, or at least not completely, you know. So that's really cool. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff here. We're going to have to have a good think about it. But, uh, yeah, I think we'll probably go with the Lamian just because it feels, feels good for, like, a story, you know. Sort of the story perspective, I think, is is nice. So, anyway, guys, I'll, uh, I'll leave you with a happy couple. So, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.